despite how critical it is to the body, um, no one's really been able to develop a functional model of the human kidney. And so that's essentially what I am trying to do. As a scientist, you are really never bored. There's always a problem to solve. Typically, if you find something you are passionate about, that would motivate you to do things that you never really um, imagined possible. Organs on chips were basically uh, our approach to the problem of, of trying to find replacements for animal testing that uh, would be able to predict responses of drugs or toxins in humans. Where we're going right now is actually trying to see if we can develop models of specific kidney diseases, genetic diseases that are seen in a subset of patients that people know the defect and we might be able to recreate that on chips or get cells from those patients, make IPS cells from those patients. Um, and also the real goal is to start um, looking for developing a new therapeutics. So we don't want to engineer a whole organ. We want to build what's basically a minimal functional unit of an organ that, that has the relevant cells, the relevant architecture, the relevant mechanical environment in order to, um, to mimic specific functionalities of that organ. We take an approach where we use microchip manufacturing approaches uh, because they give control over features at the same nanometer to micrometer scale that living cells and tissues live at. And we create what are called microfluidic devices that have very tiny, less than a millimeter wide, hollow channels that we basically can line with living cells So my role is to uh, lead the microengineering team. And so we uh, design and build uh, the microfluidic devices themselves. We actually have a fabrication facility and we, we design new chip designs, um, basically responding to whatever the researchers actually uh, want to do experimentally. The kidney is, is the primary source of filtration of blood. Um, it's, a, it's a major source of excretion. And um, what you really need is, uh, in sp specifically the glomerulus, provides filtration of the blood, and it has these uh, podocytes that actually look like fingers, and they interlock, but they're leaky. And they're leaky in such a way that it, it prevents most blood proteins from exiting, but things like small molecules are free to diffuse out into what's going to become the urine. As a result, we really need to build this tight barrier, but engineer it in a way that it mimics what happens in vivo. So we don't want a perfect blocking, and we don't want a complete leak where all the proteins can, can diffuse through as well. We really feel like this, um, the advance we've made so far has really opened up a, a, huge, a huge opportunity to address so many aspects of human kidney biology and also really try to understand the mechanism that underlie um, kidney disease. So with the glomerulus, for example, the um, uh, part of the kidney that I study, once you have damage to the cells that are targeted in this um, compartment of the kidney, it typically is just a complete loss of that functional unit. And so then you're no longer able to remove toxins from blood and um, leading to a lot of um, um, disease like toxemia. And so you can imagine that being able to have a functional model of it can really help us understand how these toxicities um, develop and possibly even eliminate some of the drugs um, during the um, drug development pipeline that could um, end up um, failing in human clinical trials. Here we will bring people like myself and other senior people somewhat acting as mentors in entrepreneurship, but we also have a special business development team. We have our own uh, intellectual property attorneys that are strategic, that provide feedback. When you first do a report of invention, which is something we teach even students to start with early, so that they're getting feedback about what path to take. It's a place where I can say that I've, I'm excited about every single project I work on um, because everything's very fast paced and high impact. You can immediately see where a given project is going, even though it might be early in the project, the trajectory is very clear. And that's what really excites me, seeing that trajectory of, of going from the lab and a bench setting to some sort of initial prototype, initial early product to a final product that can actually make a difference in, in pharmacological development programs. It's extremely exciting to be able to interact with people from so many different backgrounds. And, and as you can see, this project has engineers, uh, physicists, uh, chemists, and biologists, and developmental biologists. And, and I think that working together with, these, uh, with this team is really what made this kind of work possible.